darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. I have decided to stick to love, hate is too great a burden to bear. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. In the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. Faith is taking the first step even when you can't see the whole staircase. If you can't fly then run, if you can't run then walk, if you can't walk then crawl, but whatever you do you have to keep moving forward. But I know, somehow, that only when it is dark enough can you see the stars. Let no man pull you so low as to hate him. There comes a time when one must take a position that is neither safe, nor politic, nor popular, but he must take it because conscience tells him it is right. Nothing in the world is more dangerous than sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. Intelligence plus character that is the goal of true education. Everybody can be great, because anybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and verb agree to serve. You only need a heart full of grace. A soul generated by love. No one really knows why they are alive until they know what they die for. We must come to see that the end we seek is a society at peace with itself, a society that can live with its conscience. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. A man who won't die for something is not fit to live. Forgiveness is not an occasional act, it is a constant attitude. If a man is called to be a street sweeper, he should sweep streets even as a Michelangelo painted, or Beethoven composed music or Shakespeare wrote poetry. He should sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will pause to say, Here lived a great street sweeper who did his job well. We must accept finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. Those who are not looking for happiness are the most likely to find it, because those who are searching forget that the surest way to be happy is to seek happiness for others. There is some good in the worst of us and some evil in the best of us. When we discover this, we are less prone to hate our enemies. There comes a time when silence is betrayal. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin but by the content of their character. Never forget that everything Hitler did in Germany was legal. As my sufferings mounted I soon realized that there were two ways in which I could respond to my situation either to react with bitterness or seek to transform the suffering into a creative force. I decided to follow the latter course. I have a dream that one day little black boys and girls will be holding hands with little white boys and girls. We must live together as brothers or perish together as fools. Science investigates, religion interprets. Science gives man knowledge, which is power, religion gives man wisdom, which is control. Science deals mainly with facts, religion deals mainly with values. The two are not rivals. People fail to get along because they fear each other, they fear each other because they don't know each other. They don't know each other because they have not communicated with each other. No person has the right to reign on your dreams. One has a moral responsibility to disobey unjust laws. A nation that continues year after year to spend more money on military defense than on programs of social uplift is approaching spiritual doom. Wars are poor chisels for carving out peaceful tomorrows. 
Not only will we have to repent for the sins of bad people, but we also will have to repent for the appalling silence of good people. The time is always right to do the right thing. Life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? There can be no deep disappointment where there is not deep love. If I cannot do great things, I can do small things in a great way. Every man must decide whether he will walk in the light of creative altruism or in the darkness of destructive selfishness. Hatred paralyzes life, love releases it. Hatred confuses life, love harmonizes it. Hatred darkens life, love illuminates it. The choice is not between violence and non-violence, but between non-violence and non-existence. Love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy to a friend. The first question which the priest and the Levite asked was, If I stop to help this man, what will happen to me? But, the good Samaritan reversed the question, If I do not stop to help this man, what will happen to him? Free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty we are free at last. Power without love is reckless and abusive, and love without power is sentimental and anemic. Power at its best is love implementing the demands of justice, and justice at its best is power correcting everything that stands against love. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly, affects all indirectly. An individual has not started living until he can rise above the narrow confines of his individualistic concerns to the broader concerns of all humanity. Let us not seek to satisfy our thirst for freedom by drinking from the cup of bitterness and hatred. True compassion is more than flinging a coin to a beggar. It comes to see that an edifice which produces beggars needs restructuring. Returning violence for violence multiplies violence, adding deeper darkness to a night already devoid of stars. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. Our scientific power has outrun our spiritual power. We have guided missiles and misguided men. I believe that unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final word in reality. This is why right, temporarily defeated, is stronger than evil triumphant. Lightning makes no sound until it strikes. An individual who breaks a law that conscience tells him is unjust, and who willingly accepts the penalty of imprisonment in order to arouse the conscience of the community over its injustice, is in reality expressing the highest respect for the law. Of all the forms of inequality, Injustice in health care is the most shocking and inhumane. No work is insignificant. All labor that uplifts humanity has dignity and importance and should be undertaken with painstaking excellence. The greatest purveyor of violence in the world, my own government, I cannot be silent. We have flown the air like birds and swum the sea like fishes but have yet to learn the simple act of walking the earth like brothers. It's all right to tell a man to lift himself by his own bootstraps, but it is cruel jest to say to a bootless man that he ought to lift himself by his own bootstraps. We are now faced with the fact that tomorrow is today. We are confronted with the fierce urgency of now. In this unfolding conundrum of life and history, there is such a thing as being too late. This is no time for apathy or complacency. This is a time for vigorous and positive action. Not everybody can be famous, but everybody can be great, because greatness is determined by service. The day we see the truth and cease to speak is the day we begin to die. 
those who love peace must learn to organize as effectively as those who love war. It may well be that we will have to repent in this generation. Not merely for the vitriolic words and the violent actions of the bad people, but for the appalling silence and indifference of the good people who sit around and say, wait on time. If you lose hope, somehow you lose the vitality that keeps moving, you lose that courage to be, that quality that helps you go on in spite of it all. And so today I still have a dream. Returning hate for hate multiplies hate, adding deeper darkness to a night already devoid of stars. Darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. Until justice rolls down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. Human progress is neither automatic nor inevitable. Every step toward the goal of justice requires sacrifice, suffering, and struggle, the tireless exertions and passionate concern of dedicated individuals. We may have all come on different ships, but we're in the same boat now. There is no gain without struggle. Quietly endure, silently suffer, and patiently wait. It may be true that the law cannot make a man love me, but it can stop him from lynching me, and I think that's pretty important. It is cheerful to God when you rejoice or laugh from the bottom of your heart. I became convinced that non-cooperation with evil is as much a moral obligation as is cooperation with good. The question is not if we will be extremists, but what kind of extremists we will be. The nation and the world are in dire need of creative extremists. It really boils down to this, that all life is interrelated. We are all caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tired into a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one destiny, affects all indirectly. True peace is not merely the absence of tension, it is the presence of justice. A right delayed is a right denied. Occasionally in life there are those moments of unutterable fulfillment which cannot be completely explained by those symbols called words. Their meanings can only be articulated by the inaudible language of the heart. Take the first step in faith. You don't have to see the whole staircase, just take the first step. He who passively accepts evil is as much involved in it as he who helps to perpetrate it. He who accepts evil without protesting against it is really cooperating with it. The ultimate tragedy is not the oppression and cruelty by the bad people but the silence over that by the good people. It does not matter how long you live, but how well you do it. Morality cannot be legislated but behavior can be regulated. Judicial decrees may not change the heart, but they can restrain the heartless. When we look at modern man, we have to face the fact that modern man suffers from a kind of poverty of the spirit, which stands in glaring contrast to his scientific and technological abundance. We've learned to fly the air like birds, we've learned to swim the seas like fish, and yet we haven't learned to walk the earth as brothers and sisters. If we do an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, we will be a blind and toothless nation. Whenever men and women straighten their backs up, they are going somewhere, because a man can't ride your back unless it is bent. We must learn that passively to accept an unjust system is to cooperate with that system, and thereby to become a participant in its evil. One day we will learn that the heart can never be totally right when the head is totally wrong. We know through painful experience that freedom is never voluntarily given by the oppressor, it must be demanded by the oppressed. In a real sense all life is interrelated. All men are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny.
whatever affects one directly, affects all indirectly. I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be, and you can never be what you ought to be until I am what I ought to be. This is the interrelated structure of reality. And I must say tonight that a riot is the language of the unheard. And what is it America has failed to hear? It has failed to hear that the promises of freedom and justice have not been met. And it has failed to hear that large segments of white society are more concerned about tranquility and the status quo than about justice and humanity. Use me, God. Show me how to take who I am, who I want to be, and what I can do, and use it for a purpose greater than myself. One day the absurdity of the almost universal human belief in the slavery of other animals will be palpable. We shall then have discovered our souls and become worthier of sharing this planet with them. Shallow understanding from people of good will is more frustrating than absolute misunderstanding from people of ill will. A lie cannot live. One's dignity may be assaulted, vandalized, cruelly mocked, but it can never be taken away unless it is surrendered. There is nothing more majestic than the determined courage of individuals willing to suffer and sacrifice for their freedom and dignity. We must remember that intelligence is not enough. Intelligence plus character that is the goal of true education. The complete education gives one not only power of concentration, but worthy objectives upon which to concentrate. Hate destroys the hater. The major problem of life is learning how to handle the costly interruptions. The door that slams shut the plan that got sidetracked, the marriage that failed. Or that lovely poem that didn't get written because someone knocked on the door. Be the peace you wish to see in the world. One has not only a legal, but a moral responsibility to obey just laws. Conversely, one has a moral responsibility to disobey unjust laws. Human salvation lies in the hands of the creatively maladjusted. What affects one in a major way, affects all in a minor way. The first principle of value that we need to rediscover is this, that all reality hinges on moral foundations. In other words, that this is a moral universe, and that there are moral laws of the universe just as abiding as the physical laws from rediscovering lost values. Like an unchecked cancer, hate corrodes the personality and eats away its vital unity. Hate destroys a man's sense of values and his objectivity. It causes him to describe the beautiful as ugly and the ugly as beautiful, and to confuse the true with the false and the false with the true. We are faced with the fact, my friends, that tomorrow is today. Procrastination is still the thief of time. Over the bleached bones and jumbled residues of numerous civilizations are written the pathetic words too late. We will have to repent in this generation not merely for the hateful words and actions of the bad people but for the appalling silence of the good people. We all too often have socialism for the rich and rugged free market capitalism for the poor. Rarely do we find men who willingly engage in hard, solid thinking. There is an almost universal quest for easy answers and half-baked solutions. Nothing pains some people more than having to think. And so even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I could never again raise my voice against the violence of the oppressed, without having first spoken clearly to the greatest purveyor of violence in the world today, my own government. Find a voice in a whisper. Whites, it must frankly be said, 
are not putting in a similar mass effort to re-educate themselves out of their racial ignorance. It is an aspect of their sense of superiority that the white people of America believe they have so little to learn. Like anybody, I would like to have a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. There comes a time when one must take a position that is neither safe, nor politic, nor popular, but he must take it because his conscience tells him it is right. Three hundred years of humiliation, abuse and deprivation cannot be expected to find voice in a whisper. So I have tried to make it clear that it is wrong to use a moral means to attain moral ends. But now I must affirm that it is just as wrong, or even more so, to use moral means to preserve a moral ends. The hope of a secure and livable world lies with disciplined nonconformists who are dedicated to justice, peace, and brotherhood. The end of life is not to be happy, nor to achieve pleasure and avoid pain, but to do the will of God, come what may. I have a dream. Violence brings only temporary victories, violence, by creating many more social problems than it solves, never brings permanent peace. Too unconcerned to love and too passionless to hate, too detached to be selfish and too lifeless to be unselfish, too indifferent to experience joy and too cold to express sorrow, they are neither dead nor alive, they merely exist. A riot is the language of the unheard. The function of education, therefore, is to teach one to think intensively and to think critically. But education which stops with efficiency may prove the greatest menace to society. The most dangerous criminal may be the man gifted with reason, but with no morals. There is nothing more dangerous than to build a society with a large segment of people in that society who feel that they have no stake in it, who feel that that have nothing to lose. People who have stake in their society, protect that society, but when they don't have it, they unconsciously want to destroy it. A genuine leader is not a searcher for consensus but a molder of consensus. A man can't ride your back unless it's bent. I said to my children, I'm going to work and do everything that I can do to see that you get a good education. I don't ever want you to forget that there are millions of God's children who will not and cannot get a good education, and I don't want you feeling that you are better than they are. For you will never be what you ought to be until they are what they ought to be. The quality not the longevity, of one's life is what is important. Almost always the creative, dedicated minority has made the world better. We are prone to judge success by the index of our salaries or the size of our automobiles rather than by the quality of our service and relationship to mankind. We cannot walk alone. And as we walk, we must make the pledge that we shall always march ahead. We cannot turn back. And one day we must ask the question, why are there 40 million poor people in America? And when you begin to ask that question, you are raising questions about the economic system, about a broader distribution of wealth. When you ask that question, you begin to question the capitalistic economy. The saving of our world from pending doom will come, not through the complacent adjustment of the conforming majority, but through the creative maladjustment of a nonconforming minority.